this bowl, I have 200 grams of almond flour, 60 grams of coconut flour, a half a teaspoon of zangtum gum, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So what I'm going to do is mix all of these ingredients together, and then I'm going to use my uh, food processor to cut the butter into the flour. I want to make sure that this is pretty thoroughly mixed so that all of the ingredients for this pie crust are thoroughly mixed together. So you want to make sure that you mix this until you can't see the other ingredients. So in other words, you shouldn't see signs of baking powder or salt and the zangtum gum because we use so little, goes a long way. Get ready for the next step. I measured 180 grams of butter and I put it, the butter in the freezer. So this step I have to do very quickly because the butter has to be very cold. So I'm going to take the butter, cut it into chunks, add it to the flour mix that I now have in the food processor. And I will give it a few pulses. So at this point, I'm just going to pulse it. And I'm going to have to scrape down the sides so that you can see what's happening in the food processor. As you can see, it's coming together. I have a few more pulses, and then this will be ready. So you'll notice that I'm pulsing it. I'm not just letting it run. Okay, and that is ready. I'm going to make it into a ball and put it in the refrigerator. So here I have the dough that I removed from the food processor. I'm going to shape this to a nice ball. Put it in plastic wrap. And I don't want to handle it too much because the butter has to be cold. So when you do this, have everything ready to go. And now that's going into the refrigerator for two hours, minimum one hour, but I'm going to leave mine in for two. It took a little work, and I think I've gotten this about where I need it to be. I have a nine inch pie plate. I'm going to try to Shape the dough around the pie plate. Put it on the bottom here and hope. So I'll have to trim off a little of the excess.
And then we'll get ready to pour in the quiche mixture. The pie crust has been molded to the pie pan. I'm using the crust shield to protect it from overcooking. And I've also taken a fork and pushed a few holes down in here to keep the dough from rising up. Well, this morning I got up and decided I wanted something different for lunch. And I haven't had quiche in quite a while, and I decided to see if I could a keto style quiche. So I'm going to start with my Escali scale, and I have it on grams, but I'm going to change it to ounces. So I put my bowl on and then I zero it out. So I need four ounces of cottage cheese. Now my predicament today is that I don't have all of the fresh ingredients for this recipe. So I did a little Google search and I found that um, even though some of them are not highly recommended, but I could substitute some dry ingredients for the fresh, which is going to be the celery and the onion. So I'm going to add four ounces cottage cheese. And to that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of celery seed. It clearly tells me that celery seed is no good substitute for celery, but I thought it might just add the taste in. I'm going to add two tablespoons of dried onion, and the dried onion is to replace a fresh onion. I need one Low of minced garlic. So I'm going to use a teaspoon of this minced garlic that you can get cut up at the store because I don't have any fresh garlic. And I'm going to add a little sage because I'm really supposed to use sausage, but I don't have any. So I'm going to just use a teaspoon of the sage. going to substitute bacon for the sausage. I will also need four eggs. Additionally, the recipe called for tarragon. I don't have any. And the substitute table indicated that basil could be a substitute for tarragon. So I'm going to add half a teaspoon of basil. And I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And remember, never measure your salt over your bowl. And I will need an eighth of a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and I'm using the peppercorn medley. And I will also be using a half a cup of milk. I want to beat this a little. So I'm going to use heavy cream, and I will be using quarter of a cup of heavy cream. Earlier, I put the bacon into a cold oven and that bacon is now ready. So I'm going to take four slices and crumble them and add them to this mix. I love the oven fried bacon. You can have it as crisp as you want or not. But for this person's recipe, this is working just fine. Now this mix is going to get poured into my pie crust. And once 
it's ready to go into the pie crust. I will top it with Parmesan cheese because that's what I have. But you can use cheddar cheese or jack cheese. I'm going to pour my egg batter into the pie shell. And I'm going to top it with Parmesan cheese. As I said, you can use cheddar or jack cheese. This just happens to be what I have in the house. So I'm going to be pretty interested to see how this all turns out. We often read about recipes that you make just from what's in your refrigerator. And that's basically what I've done today. Now I'm going to cover this edge in foil. So now the pie is covered in foil and I'm going to bake this at 375. I'm going to check it again in 15 minutes. The pie has cooked for 30 minutes. I checked it after the first 15 minutes and I wanted to wait until the cheese melted and bubbled up. Well, I'm going to let this cool off and I'll see you back here. The pie has been in the refrigerator overnight and almond flour is very delicate. So I'm going to cut this. Pie, pie seems very solid. This is going to be my lunch today. So since it was one of those make something out of what you have at home, I'm going to really hope that it's really good. I'll take the quiche and heat it up in my air fryer. Tastes like a nice savory pie. When you think you have nothing in your refrigerator and you want to not run out to the store, just look up substitutions, get as close as you can to the recipe, and bon appetit. See you next time.